Hey guys, it's Justine, and today we're gonna to be talking about some of my favorite features in Big Sur. This is the latest update to macOS that will be coming out later this fall, but the public beta is out now, so if you do wanna check it out, make sure you back up your computer or put it on a secondary device. You can find the link and all of the information to download at Apple's public beta website. So first, before we get into this, a huge thank you to Dbrand for sponsoring this video. I'm such a huge fan of their skins, and they just came out with these beauties. They have an all new pastel line, so you can get these for your computer computer, for your phone. They even have this really cool Rubik's Cube. You can check out their website and see all of the devices that they support and I have a feeling that you're going to find something that you love and I'm so excited about it. these pastel colors. Normally I have their pink skins on all of my devices. I thought I would do a little different of a color scheme. This is what I decided to go with for my MacBook, my phone, and my iPad. If pastel isn't your thing, they do have tons of other colors and options and textures. They also have these really cool grip cases, which I have on right now, and you can customize this to be any color as well. It has little grippy sides, clicky buttons. It's also impact resistant up to nine feet, which is incredible because we all know I drop my phone away too many times a day. I'm also really excited about this Rubik's Cube, which is kind of unique because it does have some of their pastel colors on it. And when I got this in the mail, I thought I've never actually tried to solve a Rubik's Cube and I have no idea how. Well, after watching a few YouTube tutorials and shortly after realizing that these colors don't actually align with the real Rubik's Cube colors. Purple is actually the color yellow. <laughs> so now that I can solve it under three minutes, I'm gonna try to maybe speed up my skills a little. But this is a really fun quarantine hobby. If anybody hasn't tried, I'll put a link in the description if you wanna check out Dbrand and all of the awesome skins that they have available. And now my friends, it is time to talk about Big Sur. I actually went to Big Sur last month. It was the first time that I had left the house at all. I came out of quarantine. I was like, I need to go somewhere. You guys, I have Big Sur on my lap while I'm in Big Sur. Behind me is the Bixby Bridge, and this is one of the most iconic bridges. And it's even on the desktop background. It's so cool. I gotta put my mask back on because there's a lot of people around, but this is amazing. And I had planned on making the whole video here, but there's a lot of people. So I think I'm just gonna get some B-roll and I'll go home and talk to you guys about Big Sur. I've got my D brand skin on, so it's a, uh, I don't know, it's a vibe. is the design. Everything is now very seamless with iOS. Like at some point I started reaching in to touch my screen and nothing happened. The icons are now much more uniform. The menu is more of a transparent kind of look, so it's way more seamless integrated into the background. There's now a 10 day history for battery life, which I think is kind of cool because you'll be able to go back and see what apps have been kind of sucking the life out of your computer. The toolbars and sidebars have all been redesigned to blend in better with each window. The windows have a lighter design, softer, more round edges. And like I said, the icons have also been redesigned. Something else that's really cool is this now has the startup chime. You guys might remember this chime. Well, they removed that around 2016 or so, and I forgot that that was an update in this macOS Big Sur. When it happened, I was like, <gasps> What are you doing? The notification center has a new redesign. So when you go into your notifications, you'll be able to see the notifications mixed with the widgets. So all of this feels so much like iOS 14 that it's kind of crazy because this is kind of what your notifications look like when you're on your iPhone with the version of iOS 14. And it even has a control center. So much like the control center on your phone, you can do things like turn the Wi-Fi off, Bluetooth, AirDrop, set do not disturb. You can adjust your display, your sounds. And I don't really know how else to explain playing it except it's like control center in iOS and I love it. The thing that I'm most excited about though in this update is messages. Now much like iOS 14, again I feel like I keep going back to iOS 14 because there's so many similarities and crossovers here that you can do a lot of things that you can do on that update as well. So things like pinned messages, you can pin up to nine conversations and that will carry over from iOS to your computer to your iPad. So it's all very seamless and inside of those pinned conversations if there's group conversations you can now add an emoji or an image to those conversations and of course you can also change the name. I feel like a lot
lot of times, most of my group conversations are just people changing the name to funny things and then I can't ever find that group conversation because people will change the name and I won't even realize it. I'm like, where is that conversation? I know we were just having a chat. To make group conversations a little bit easier, they have inline responses. But I feel like for group messages, this is gonna be wildly useful. So if somebody else is talking about something, you can then go in and click into that specific message and then have a separate conversation under it. I'm surprised it took them this long. I don't care how long it took, I'm just glad it's here. If you've ever tried to search in messages, it's not a good experience at all. I don't really know how else to say it. It's not good. But they do have an updated search, so this will help you find conversations, photos, links, much easier than you could previously. I use iMessage so much for so many different things, like video changes, sharing files back and forth, instead of even using email. Another big update is Safari. So what's really cool about this is they've integrated a lot of privacy features. So inside of the Privacy Control Center, you can kind of click into it, and this will show you how many trackers have tried to track you, and and how many of those it's blocked. This is cool because I think a lot of us just surf the web not really considering the privacy aspect of what's happening. We're just, you know, mindlessly searching, shopping, whatever. So with this, it'll let you know exactly where you've been and what has been blocked. I use tabs a lot, like sometimes way too much. Way too many tabs are open. So you can now preview a tab instead of having to click into it. I think that's pretty awesome because I'll have so many tabs open that I won't remember which one I'm actually looking for. So now you can quickly go through and highlight over it and you'll be able to see a preview of it. They've made it easy so you can migrate extensions from other browsers. You can also transfer over your browser history, your passwords, and all of that stuff. So if you weren't using Safari before and you were using, say, Chrome, they're like, hey, let's just make it easy for you to come on back over here. You also have built-in translation on Safari, 4K, YouTube viewing, freaking finally! That's actually supported in macOS Catalina, so that's gonna be carrying over, obviously, to Big Sur. So they did a huge update to Maps, and they brought a lot of the features that they had in iOS over to the desktop version, which I don't really use Maps on my computer that often. I think one of the things that I would use on the computer in Maps is when we're allowed to travel again. They have these really cool things called guides, and these are curated by brands and trusted people to give you the best places to shop, to eat, or to visit. So this is gonna be really neat when we can leave the house again. I do like that if you're a cyclist, this will now give you cycling directions. It'll give you elevation if you want to avoid busy roads or stairs. It'll give you those different routes and you can also send that right to your phone too. And if you have an electric vehicle, which I don't have yet, but I really, really, really want to get one in the future. Getting one now was kind of pointless because I don't really go anywhere. You can use the new maps to get guided directions to route you to places that you can charge your electric vehicle. So be able to find those charging stations. The app store is getting a big update. They're calling it the nutrition label. So various apps will be able to have a rating. You'll be able to figure out exactly what information they're gathering, what they're sharing. So that's gonna be really helpful because I feel like obviously with all of the TikTok drama right now, so having an upfront knowledge of what those apps are actually doing in the background is it long overdue actually. So if you have your phone and your Mac running on the latest iOS updates with Big Sur and iOS 14, you'll be able to have automatic switching between the two devices with the AirPods, which is going to be really great because when I used to travel a lot on flights, I'd be going from my computer to my phone, back to my computer. So being able to have that seamless transition is going to be really cool. HomeKit is getting secure video cameras. You can view those right in the home app. The release will be coming out later this fall. And like I said, the public beta is out. But if you do decide to download this, make sure you see if your computer is compatible with it. And if you do plan on installing, please make sure you back up your Mac just in case something happens. It is a beta, so it's not a full release. So I guess that's it. If you guys are new to my channel, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell. And if you aren't new here, hello, hi. I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs> Bye.